I started doing MS research when I was a research fellow back in 1999. And since then, my research agenda has grown over the years and developed from one study into another. Recently, um, the need for more research, particularly in progressive MS, has become more and more clear, not only from the void in the literature when you do a lit search and try to find out what av available therapies there are, but also from patients. When patients come to you and they say, well, I have progressive MS and they can't do anything about that. Um, that really, leaves a it really leaves a hole in the research and it highlights the need for additional research to really focus in on progressive MS. There are a million people living in the world with progressive MS and there while there are treatment options that are available and there are treatment options that are um, definitely in the testing phases it's very limited as compared with relapsing remitting MS and we really need to focus our efforts there. So as a result we've after we finished our most recent clinical trial that documented the efficacy of a memory retraining protocol in relapsing remitting MS, we decided to focus it in specifically on progressive MS and examine the efficacy in progressive MS. The next step would potentially be to modify it if needed for persons with MS, progressive MS to maximize its efficacy with that population. It's important to note that MS results in significant functional difficulties for persons that are living with the illness, MS in general. And it's particularly problematic in persons with progressive MS. Um, and progressive MS, because it's been fairly neglected over the years, really deserves the attention that relapsing remitting MS has gotten. So in regard to the functional decline that persons see, they see there are difficulties in mobility, there, there could be difficulties in speech, there are certainly difficulties in cognition, and it's the difficulties in cognition that I focus on. Because when you think about memory and you think about your cognition, your cognition really is who you are. Um, everything that you are as an individual is because of what you've learned over the years, whether it be your behavioral responses to other people, your academic knowledge of a certain area, your ability to work in a certain area, your ability to manage a household and how you react to people. All of that has been learned over the years. So your learning and your cognitive functioning is essential to who you are as an individual. So what happens with MS is cognitive functioning begins to decline, and as people experience these declines, they see an impact of the cognitive declines on their everyday life. And that's what we're trying to alleviate. That's what we're working toward, is trying to improve cognitive functioning so that we improve someone's everyday life and their overall quality of life so they can enjoy a higher quality of life. Well, these grants are really the beginning of the effort to stop and progressive MS and to treat progressive MS more and more effectively. Mm -hmm. The next step, as I believe Dr. Thompson or Dr. Comey mentioned, um, is the unveiling of collaborative grants that will network different laboratories across the country to work together mm -hmm. for a common purpose. Um, so I think that this is really just the beginning and through this process, Individuals who are particularly interested in progressive MS and treating and stopping progressive MS have been identified. Um, and we've already begun to discuss options with one another and talk with one another about strengths and what we might be able to work together toward in the future, whether it be through the MS, through the Progressive MS Alliance or through another funding mechanism. It's the collaboration and the relationships that will really make the difference. Well, my primary goal is to do this study that was recently funded mm -hmm. to collect the, recruit the subjects, the participants, collect the data, and yeah. actually find a result and get it published, and then get it used by the community. So that's always my primary goal, is to get the treatment I'm working on validated, and then once it's validated, out there. Mm -hmm. um, another side goal may be to, to modify the treatment. if the research shows, if the data shows that we need to modify it for progressive MS, because it may be that we need to modify it. Um, and that is why we do the research. So that, that's a valuable result from the research. But in addition to that, I think myself as well as my collaborators at Kessler Foundation are seeking to build collaborations with other international experts. Um, and we've, you know, we already have several in existence and we want to maximize those and 
further the goals of those collaborations to try to increase the amount of research we can do and the number of participants we can include in our research worldwide. That's a good question. Um, sometimes when, you're, when we're examining the efficacy of cognitive rehabilitation protocols, what we're seeing is that while we may be treating memory through the cognitive rehabilitation protocol we're currently testing, other aspects of cognition are important in whether or not that treatment protocol works. So if someone is having a processing speed problem, mm -hmm. they may not be able to benefit maximally from the memory intervention where someone who doesn't have a processing speed problem may be able to maximally benefit from the intervention. So what we'll be doing with the data we collect from this progressive study is look at the cognitive profiles of our participants and, their, and the efficacy of the treatment. And we'll seek to identify where persons may be having trouble so that if they're having trouble in a particular aspect of the treatment, maybe they need more sessions for that part of the treatment so that they can benefit maximally from the treatment itself. So that's what I mean when we talk about modifications.